we do a good bit of dyno testing here at Prestige Motorsports. One of the main goals of our Hardcore Tech Series is to bring real testing data to you so that you can better understand the products that are available and more importantly, how they perform together on a specific application. Today I want to show you an example of what that means. We recently conducted a manifold comparison test on a 427 LS1 stroker engine. The interesting part of this test was that the initial flow bench data didn't seem to match up with the torque and horsepower numbers that we saw on the dyno. But if we dig a little bit deeper into that data, we find that everything actually fits right into place. The first step in our comparison was an airflow test on our Superflow 1020 flow bench. Airflow was measured in cubic feet per minute, or CFM, at a pressure of 28 inches of water. The valve was open in increments of 100 thousandths of an inch, and a measurement was recorded at each step. I've plugged the data into this graph so you can see how the CFM measurements of each manifold compared. Once we understood the characteristics of the manifolds from the flow bench, we installed them on the engine and made some dyno poles. Our first manifold is the dual plane Performer RPM from Edelbrock. The engine is tested from 2500 RPM all the way up to 6500. The data is collected every 100 RPM. So after some timing and minor tuning adjustments, the engine makes a staggering 544.7 foot-pounds and 535.2 horsepower with the peaks occurring at 3600 and 5900 RPM respectively. Next, we installed the Holley mid-rise dual plane manifold and we ran the same exact test. This time the engine is making 540.4 foot-pounds and 535.8 horsepower. The Holley manifold is down on low end power, but carries the power curve slightly higher than the Edelbrock. If we only look at the peak numbers, our test tells us that the Edelbrock is a slightly better performing manifold for this combination. The interesting thing is, that's the opposite conclusion we gathered from the flow bench numbers. So what happened? Well, let's take a closer look. Our Land and Sea data acquisition system captured several other bits of data for us in addition to engine torque. I want to focus on three of those. First, our Holley manifold flowed more air on the flow bench, so I want to see how it actually did on the engine. We can see that the flow bench data carried over to the engine dyno. The Holley manifold did in fact take in more CFM on the running engine. More air means that we can add more fuel to the engine, and more fuel should equal more power. Let's take a look at our fuel consumption. Fuel consumption was also up for the Holley manifold. So what happened here? We have all the ingredients for more power, yet our recipe didn't turn out. When we look at our air fuel ratios, we see that the extra CFM created a better signal at the boosters, pulling more fuel and consequently the engine ran rich on the bottom. That's the reason for the drop in power. After analyzing all of our data, we find that the carburetor tune was actually the culprit for the power loss. Our manifold was functioning exactly as we suspected, and it's actually the fuel curve that needs to be changed. So there you have it, a perfect example of what it means to provide you with real testing data. Had we only looked at power numbers, we may have swapped the Holley manifold for the Edelbrock and moved on our merry way. Unfortunately, that happens more often than not. Make sure your testing facility understands exactly how performance parts work together on a particular application. Understanding the individual characteristics of each component as well as analyzing how it functions as one part of a combination is absolutely essential before making the decision to condemn or condone that particular component.